one approach where there are perhaps uh, topics that can be scaled up, but then when you do that, then the reverse, the, the, the challenge is how you avoid, I would say, the multiplication of so many individual, I would say, initiatives that they are not, I would say, representative of the continental approach and they remain uh, much more uh, as local initiatives. So that's a bit the challenge that uh, uh, we, we are facing and I think a contribution for the discussion of today for the digital innovation hubs from the African Union uh, Commission perspective. Thank you very much. And as I said, we ended this for the uh, education strategy. We have uh, flyers uh, uh, available here and I'm more than happy to uh, enter in any discussions on the other topics. Uh, I just uh, went quickly through. Thank you, Margarita. I hand over to you. Thank you very much, Sandro. And I would like to introduce you now to uh, another amazing speaker from uh, uh, Nigeria, GIZ Digital Transformation Center, uh, the head of the team to Weba Diwani, um, that is Project Manager, Digital Transformation Center, GIZ uh, Digital Solution from Lagos, Nigeria. Let's see if we can uh, project uh, here in the room and to Weber, can you hear us? Hi, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? To Weber, I can see you, but you're not yet projected. Give us a second. Our AV team is doing its best to fix the problem and to connect you to the audio, audio to the room. Okay, Weber, we see you now on the big screen. Now, welcome in Addis Ababa digitally. Let's see if we can hear you well. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and I leave the floor to you. Thank you so much for being with us and apologies for the e-caps in connecting to the Zoom link. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Um, yeah, it's one of the challenges of digitalization sometimes. <laughs> we wish it would be more automatic, but we're getting there. So very, very want, cool. yeah. Can you tell us more about the Digital Transformation Center in Nigeria and also in other countries that GIZ uh, is setting up? What is your goal and how you see the collaboration between your initiative and projects such as Digilogic? Thank you. Yes, uh, the Digital Transformation Nigeria is one of uh, over 20 digital transformation centers that uh, have been uh, started or implemented all over Africa. So we've got uh, Kenya, Rwanda, Benin, Niger, um, Ghana, Nigeria as well, uh, as, well as others. And um, these uh, projects are supposed to foster um, digitalization or the digital transformation of MSMEs in their systems. All of them take up a different uh, character depending on the needs of the ecosystem in which they operate. So they're part of a, most of them belong to a, a bigger global program initiative of the GIZ and some of them like mine are sort of independent of that program but still stay in the network. Uh, so the one in Nigeria has uh, started um, implementing in March of this year. We had a longer process than the others. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, we are very much in the process right now of implementing digital innovation hubs. And so we do work along the same lines as, as DigiLogic and there's a, a lot of alignment there as well as synergies. Um, as we found out when we discussed earlier this year. And uh, we're currently in the process of, pro of um, our, a call for proposal for five uh, digital innovation hubs. Um, uh, should I continue or? 
Yes, please uh, go ahead. So we are currently in the in the proposal in the phase of a call of a proposal for digital innovation hubs that is going to close for Nigeria. Um, these digital innovation hubs uh, will foster uh, digital transformation of non-tech MSMEs. Um, which are largely excluded um, in the drive to for digitalization uh, in Nigeria. So we've got a lot of support for startups and other innovators producing uh, very interesting solutions, but no one talks of them. But at the same time, these MSMEs, they contribute to 49% of the GDP in Nigeria. And uh, therefore, if they grow uh, digital innovation. Uh, if, if they grow, then the economy will grow as well. And so the call for proposal runs up to 30. We're going to implement five, uh, five digital innovation hubs under the um, framework of the African European Digital Innovation Bridge. And this will be a one stop shop for the digital transformation of MSMEs. Um, so along that line, to ensure that uh, you know um, we are including marginalized communities, as in Nigeria we have a lot of the ecosystem. Eighty percent of what's going on is just in Lagos. So we are we have had stakeholder engagements in um, the other regions as well, in Kano, in Enugu, Port Harcourt, Abuja, as well as Lagos, to ensure that we can get good quality applications countrywide, which uh, was one of the reasons we still didn't have a digital innovation hub under the ADIP framework. That's what we want to do, and that uh, we get good quality proposals and to enable. Um, so the services to reach um, other communities that may not be, or, or uh, user groups that may not be in the mainstream yet, we are looking at the DIH having primarily a public benefit objective um, and being sector and region specific. And so not only in Lagos, but maybe in the other regions as well. And uh, we're looking at a consortium of actors, a minimum of two with a lead being Nigerian, because one uh, actor alone, we feel, cannot um, provide the, the services, that all the services that are needed uh, by MSMEs to be able to transform. And so um, some of the services that these digital innovation hubs may offer would include ecosystem building. So where they're based, uh, bringing together a network of service providers, uh, test before invest services, so startups would be able to validate. Uh, uh, solution with user groups, yes. You were saying? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would leave now uh, the floor to Stephen Fox uh, from BTT in uh, Finland uh, for a few words about uh, uh, what is the Digital Innovation Hub uh, uh, on the other side on the European uh, continent. And then uh, I hope uh, that you still have a few minutes to stay with us because I would leave the floor uh, to some questions from here. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Gre Good greetings. morning, Stephen. Uh, we can hear strong and clear. Uh, let me just put on a slide of Digilogic while you start presenting. Okay, uh, greetings from Finland. So I think in Europe, um, perhaps somewhat differently to Africa, the, the digital innovation hubs are within existing organizations. So, for example, uh, the Technical Research Center of Finland, VTT, and uh, Fraunhofer in Germany um, have been uh, in existence for many decades. And so rather than starting from, <clears throat> from uh, there not being an organization, uh, we have to orientate 
existing organizations towards being digital innovation hubs. And in doing so, we, um, we have often a very large number of people who are very specialized. And uh, what we've found so far with working with the, the teams thus far who've recently been selected as 12 startups to be monitored in the Digilogic program, that uh, an advantage of having large organizations with a great diversity of specialists is that we can provide focus expertise for particular topics. And what I'd like to do now is to focus in on uh, one of those topics, which has been brought to our attention as important by uh, um, a couple of the startups, and that's upskilling and the potential for dinner digital innovation hubs to, to facilitate that. So what, what they mean in the particular cases is, for example, going over to uh, electric vehicles, that there are uh, people in Africa with great um, skill as mechanics, and they are not yet used to dealing with electric vehicles. And to scale that up, we want to think of new ways of um, training people rapidly. So it's not just with digital skills to do with computer skills, but it's also the physical because we are inevitably dealing with cyber physical systems. So where there may be some computer science functionality in an electric vehicle, nonetheless, it's still a physical vehicle with an electric battery. It needs to be charged up and um, it needs to be maintained. And so if we think about what, what can be done with digital innovation hubs related to uh, bringing new skills throughout um, throughout Africa and Europe, because these new skills are needed in in Europe just as as much as they are in Africa. So we think the traditional way that comes from medieval Europe, from the city states of medieval Europe, is apprenticeship training, where people would train for five years to do a uh, one narrow skill. For example, they might be rope makers, cord winders, or barrel makers, coopers, or still today, plumbers, carpenters, and so on. So that is that is medieval thinking. And if we apply digitalization to medieval thinking, then we are just going to get uh, suboptimal outcomes from digitalization. So another perspective <clears throat> is to uh, to look at exactly what's required in the new tasks involved to do with, for example, electric vehicles and train people through digital media to be technicians for electric vehicles. And they start off with being able to do the most frequently occurring task related to maintaining electric vehicles. And then if we think about a, uh, in some tra in some very well-established global organizations, we can see the uh, customer facing personnel, they have badges with stars on them. And if they've gone through all their training, they have five stars. But to begin with, they just have one star. And that means they've been trained to do uh, one thing which is most needed. Now, this uh, thinking, we can apply it to so many things. So, for example, there's um, a great uh, research and development and innovation investments in off-grid sanitation. Now, if we trained uh, through medieval means, apprenticeships, to train people to be one person to be a ground worker to lay drains, another person to be a plumber, another person to be a carpenter, another person to be a roofer, and then try to coordinate all those people to establish off-grid sanitation. It would be a uh, organizational uh, 
desperately difficult problem with all the problems that bedevil construction projects of all scales throughout the world. But if somebody's trained to be a uh, off-grid sanitation technician, they can do a little bit of all those skills. They can be multi-skilled for that particular uh, focus. The same with um, solar energy. Rather than training a multitude of people with a medieval perspective, we can use digital means to train people to be technicians to do the all the tasks related to that. And then there can be rapid scaling up. Now, of course, in Africa, because uh, there isn't so much legacy infrastructure, Africa has the opportunity to leapfrog over this medieval thinking that has its origins in the city-states of Europe many, many hundreds of years ago. So we need to think of uh, this logic of digitalization. It should be a logic of the 21st century, not just applying digitalization to medieval thinking. So I shall now uh, open the floor to questions. Yes, thanks. Thank you, Stephen, as always. Uh, is there any question for uh, our speakers? I see, yes, one question come. Yes. Hello, you hear me? Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Mohamed Yassin from the University of uh, Lille in France, and I'm glad to attend this uh, session. Uh, but, um, I, I, in the presentation of uh, Mr. Sandro, he was showing the phases uh, which were indicating 2021. Uh, the, the different phases uh, in terms, and here in the strategy, I see that they are action oriented. So basically, what are the concrete actions which are being taken? Because you see, uh, you are putting the ministerial meeting as a, at the end, uh, and you were mentioning that it is bottom up instead of top down. So uh, is it uh, um, led by the people from from the ground is thinking or is just uh, brought to them uh, and then they are just implementing uh, this uh, this action and I see the, the, the nine strategic objectives you are putting here what has been achieved up to now from these uh, objectives and to what extent and how it is measured thank you You mentioned that it is covering the 55 uh, countries and the adherence is only 25. What are the main challenges and for non-adherence from all, uh, given that it is an African Union-led uh, initiative, so it should be uh, inclusive? Um, thank, thank you. I suppose I respond directly, Margarita? Okay. Uh, there, there are two points. Uh, um, the, Mm, because uh, so you were referring on the on the specific case, I suppose you're referring to the digital education strategy. Um, as I said, uh, the, the attempt was trying to have this combination of top-down, bottom-up approach. Okay, as you were saying, you need an enabling environment. You, at least also from the African Commission, you need to have an overall perspective that's a bit the top-down. The idea was also to combine that uh, with a bottom-up approach and seeing all, also what was, was already happening on there, what is scalable and how it can go in the remit, I would say, as I said, of the African Commission, uh, who cannot, I would say, impose things to member states, but can facilitate the, 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 the work. Um, in that framework, that's how I said, that was the objective. So uh, now it's clear that the constituency of the African Commission is member states and regional economic, economic communities. So they were the most or the main people we are speaking with. I think it, it makes uh, also quite a, a normal uh, counterpart to speak with when you come to discussion like, uh, I would say, education, because education is by definition mainly, I would say, started, yeah, there is 
role for other stakeholders in it, but the member states are the central role of it. But we have a different perhaps approach or complementary approach when we speak about agriculture, for example, where it's clear that in agriculture, the private sector has also a much more perhaps important role to play in that environment. But okay, just to come back on the education strategy. So that's why this has been structured like that. Now, where, where do we stand now? Is that, uh, that has been one year of work. Uh, didn't explain all the steps, but what we have done more or less was an assessment of the situation at the beginning. We have tried to develop also a, a so-called digital readiness index country per country. Uh, and when we did that, we have tried to use you know, data that were already available. Uh, that's not the perfect world. Uh, we took data, uh, statistical data from uh, international databases already available. As I said, there are some frustration there because you don't have, you cannot measure all the, the, the element you would like to have. But at least the advantage of that is that those the databases already exist. They are already produced on a yearly basis. So it means that once you have put the methodology, you can at least update the situation on a yearly basis. And what we did, we combined ICT indicators, so mainly coming from uh, a UN organization called ITU, so the International Telecommunication Union, who on a yearly basis collect, I would say, ICT indicators. And then we took uh, some sectorial indicators, in this case, uh, education. Okay, and we, we had kind of a two-page document with quite a number of indicators that gives an idea on the digital readiness index of each country. On, out of that, we did an assessment, and that, that's how we went for this, uh, I would say, with the task force members. We went uh, on the development of that strategy that I was saying, a bit the combination of top-down, bottom-up. And we finally had on the, here on the 1st and the 2nd of September, now very recently, uh, the uh, education ministerial meeting hosted by the African Union Commission who endorsed that strategy. So it's brand new. I would say it's from September. So now, as I was saying to you and to, to the, the, the other participant, the challenge will now start to be an effective implementation on it. Hmm? So I cannot tell you what is effective implemented and because we are just starting about that. Now, how, what is the, the plan to go there? The idea is obviously that we know that uh, all the 55 countries cannot move at the same speed. So the, the, the likelihood is that with the African Commission, uh, there will be a series of regional meetings where that strategy will again be uh, we say represented. Member states will be recalled that they have signed on this <laughs> and that they have to take some now concrete action out of that. And likely the idea would be to try to identify who is willing to take a championship in their re respective regions so that there can be, I would say, a more concrete support to some specific countries who can then share their experiences with their peers. Uh, and those countries can be of two categories, or countries who are already advanced and who are willing to continue to move and share their experiences, or some countries are we saying that in our uh, digital assessment readiness, they are on the level that they can start the process and they can, I would say, I would say be part of that process from the beginning and share the experience with third country. So that's the objective that we would like to have uh, for next year. And, the African Commission declared that next year would be at least the year of education. So that's what also a political push uh, to get uh, that uh, effectively started. I would say now the real challenge is, will that work? I don't know. We have to come for the next, uh, next meeting and we'll review that at that, that moment. Thank you, Sandro. Uh, I would leave the floor now to Dr. Vincenzo Lorusso. Uh, that is connected from uh, Brussels. Uh, Dr. Vincenzo Lorusso is from the European Commission. Uh, uh, policy officer uh, from uh, DG Research and Innovation. Uh, good morning, Vincenzo. Thank you for waking up pretty early to join us from Brussels. Um, you can hear us. Let's see if we can hear you. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you very okay. Thank you, Vincenzo. I think you wanted to um, share also a couple of slides. Let's see if that works. Right. So it's, um, Zoom says that I'm disabled to do so. If yeah. you possibly enable me indeed. Uh, I met Dr. Vincenzo Lorusso last week uh, at a, the event in Nairobi I was uh, mentioning before, where stakeholders from the research and innovation landscape uh, uh, from both Europe and Africa uh, worked together for three days. Uh, uh, to see which are the priorities and how to foster the collaboration. We would ask Dr. LaRusso to tell us more uh, about the outcomes of the event and how the European Commission foresees the collaboration uh, between uh, EU and Africa. Thank you, Vincenzo. I'll leave the floor to you. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Margarita, and a very good morning uh, to everybody. Apologies for being a little bit late. I had a bit of a, a few technical hiccups, uh, which indeed I guess are part of a, of a, an ongoing process, which is taken into account by the IGF. Um, indeed, last week we we had this, uh, I would say, very successful AU EU Innovation Agenda stakeholder events that took place in Nairobi, in Kenya, and also online at the same time. And that really the overall goal of the meet of the two days event was indeed to discuss some of these draft uh, documents, which is indeed the uh, Innovation Agenda that, in a nutshell, really aims to foster the accelerate the translation of research and innovation endeavors into tangible positive impact on the ground, namely uh, products, services, businesses and jobs in Africa as much as in Europe. And I'm uh, just trying to move to the next slide. This working document was published in mid-February this year, in the first day of the EU Africa uh, week that took place uh, indeed in, in Brussels, uh, we culminated, which culminated with the EU, EU AU summit in uh, on the 17th and 18th of February. I mean, in a nutshell, this 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 uh, agenda is consists of four objectives, which you can see them in here. Uh, number one, make it real. Number two, generate impact by design. Third, strengthen people, communities, and institutions. And the fourth, learn, monitor, scale it up. And these objectives are then uh, articulated into short, medium, and long term actions according to the four priority areas of the AU EU cooperation in science, technology, and innovation, which are, as you can see in here, public health green transition, innovation and technology, and capacities for science. Now, this year, 2022, following the publication of these working documents of the agenda of February 14th, is really very much dedicated to the so-called stakeholder dialogue. This is where we are engaging at African Union and European Union level with stakeholders across the innovation value chain to really benefit from the viewpoints, the feedback, the input on these draft documents to make sure that we can, that we can possibly amend it, expand it, edit it according to what are the actual needs on the ground in a way that then the final version of the agenda, which has to be ready by beginning of next year, will be hopefully as pertinent as possible to societal needs. Now, looking at today's discussions that we have in uh, between Addis and, and elsewhere, uh, through, through, through the internet indeed, uh, I thought I would try and, and show you what is foreseen when it comes to digitalization, but also what is foreseen for digital innovation hubs within the context of the AU innovation agenda. And perhaps let me start by taking a step back and say that we believe that indeed digital innovation hubs would be instrumental and are expected to be at the core of the AU innovation agenda and of its implementation. And I'm actually very proud to say that not only we expect digital innovation hubs and uh, their the role within the innovation ecosystem to be involved actively in the implementation of the agenda, but I'm also proud to say that they are already being involved in the conceptualization of the agenda. So last week, before we look at the short-term actions in this slide, last week we had amongst the several activities of this AU EU innovation agenda stakeholder event, also an AU EU innovation fair titled Meet the Innovators, where we showcase several uh, through a pitching moment of more than nearly two hours, where we had the opportunities through several uh, innovation hubs to have uh, several entrepreneurs which were, who were introduced by their respective champions, by their respect, respective incubators, they really showcased their innovations with a two minute pitch. Most of them were coming from Africa, a few of them were also coming from Europe. This picture is taken uh, from, from the event venue in Nairobi. And this picture moment was followed then by, uh, this is the audience, and uh, you can see the interest that this, this initiative really gathered in real, in real life. And this, this, this picture moment was then followed by an innovation fair where the innovators were then really uh, sharing, concretely speaking, their innovations, their projects to investors, other stakeholders, uh, public and private investors, and so on and so forth. So now, Coming back to the today's scope of discussion, really we believe the digital innovation hubs are at the center of this implementation and the conceptualization and the finalization of this AU innovation agenda. To do that, we are trying to work uh, as inclusively as possible with several of those important initiatives that are indeed um, part, of the, part of the process that are indeed based on digital innovation hubs. A few names, Digilogic was with us uh, last week. Uh, ADPNet was also with us last week at the same time, enriching Africa and their entire ecosystems from South Africa to Zimbabwe, Nigeria, and so on and so forth. And in the next few slides, really very quickly to conclude, you can see uh, in, 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 in highlighted in red, the actions that are explicitly foreseen a crucial role played by digitalizations or digital 
transformation and transitions. So in, across several areas, basically, for instance, in the case of public health, but also in the case of capacities for science in the area of digital education transformation, in the area of green transition for the medium actions. And I believe that the Digilogic is also doing a lot of work in that space uh, and also moving from the medium term to the long term, inevitably. And of course, as obvious as it may, it may look like also in the area of innovation and technology. So perhaps I'll stop here not to take more of your time and I'd be happy to, if time allows to, to try and address any possible questions there may be. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vincenzo. Let me give back the mic uh, to the floor. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Chapio Choka. Uh, I'm a policy officer at the African Union Commission, uh, focusing on uh, trade and uh, digital trade and uh, e-commerce. Uh, I just wanted to make an addition to what Sandro uh, indicated uh, under the digital transformation for Africa. Uh, that is uh, the digital health, the digital education, as well as digital uh, agriculture. We are also focusing on the digital trade aspect, uh, which the strategy is almost ready. And I think I just wanted to comment uh, Digilogic, what they're doing uh, in terms of um, smart logistics is going to add immensely uh, to the African continental free trade area. So uh, with that, I just wanted to say um, congratulations and uh, job well done for, for that. Thank you very much. And, uh... I should share the congratulation to all the partners across Africa and Europe for the results we brought forward. Any other <clears throat> question? Yes, sir. So, uh, my name is Peter King for the record. I'm from Liberia. And, and my, I mean, as a student of supply chain management, I think this is a very nice initiative. And I believe that smart logistics, logic, uh, smart logistics is another good concept in Africa. But we, for, for what I think is uh, the level of popularization that because this is an innovation, we believe that one of the trends I have observed is always focusing on the advanced countries in most, like in most of the wrecks, like in, in the in the various regions. I believe that since this is something that you wanted to be popularized as a means to an end, or means to ensure that there is a, a, a reduction in wastage and a reduction in logistic time I mean, process. I believe that other countries who are in the sub region can also benefit from those who have already been pushed ahead with this project or concept. So there should be a linkage that these countries that are already benefiting because I realized that when you listed the countries who are, you are partnering, you have people from Nigeria, you have from Ghana, but in the sub-region, I think Kenya as well, if I'm not mistaken. So we are looking at how this project can affect other countries that are also lagging behind. So it shouldn't be a full blown before other people get the benefit from it so that it easily spread and the idea of inclusivity is also experienced. I suppose I should take uh, uh, your observation and you're totally right. Uh, um, but Digilogic, the partners in the consortium that are developing the project, yes, uh, you are right, they are coming from Zambia, from Ghana, from Nigeria. But uh, all the programs that have been developed, uh, capacity building, challenges, co-creation impact lab that I forgot to mention before, they are all open uh, to anybody from Africa uh, willing to join. Uh, so from one aspect. Uh, the other aspect is, uh, um, Networking is important uh, for us as well. Uh, I'm not, a, it's the first time from Nigeria. I've been in Nigeria for 15 years almost, uh, but the first time for me in Addis Abeba, uh, the first time in Ethiopia. And I've never been in Liberia, unfortunately. So it's a matter also of creating the network, uh, meeting people uh, with the right skills to develop new projects, answering to uh, different calls uh, and building up uh, uh, teams working together. Uh, and for me, for example, this session is uh, very informative and I um, would, would be happy to have a chat with you right after. Anybody else like to give? Uh, just a brief comment since it has been mentioned by my colleague, uh, the importance of the uh, digital trade in uh, consolidating the the, the the transformation because uh, the, the 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 experience of the COVID um, has uh, put a, a push in digitalizing provisions uh, of, of delivery of services 
and maybe uh, in the future here in the uh, in Africa we uh, we interestingly uh, adhering to these imposed boundaries uh, imposed on us on from the Conference of Berlin uh, 1885. Uh, I don't know why we should not learn from the uh, European. Given this is a this is a, a joint project between uh, African Union and the European Union. Why not they transfer to the the wisdom of the free uh, free movement of goods and services uh, between the, the the people who are constituting the same uh, uh, entity, and this is going to uh, in uh, to push forward the African free continental tri uh, tri uh, trade area, and this is going to also make. Uh, a person from Liberia to communicate with a person in Egypt or uh, from anywhere. Uh, silly, uh, we are adhering to this uh, to this uh, political boundaries, which is not uh, from the nature of the Africa. I think we have to find people who are proactive uh, to overcome these boundaries, and I think the digitalization is a good uh, an instrument to for cross bordering, especially if it is. Uh, if it is extended to the services, uh, provision of services. Of course, we, uh, Africa needs uh, infrastructure for that. And um, uh, each, each region can work uh, hardly to uh, improve the, the infrastructure, maybe the digital roads uh, or uh, infrastructures uh, that will, uh, will help uh, the Africans uh, to, to at least uh, ameliorate the situation of uh, their development. This is a comment, uh, it is a personal comment, it's not uh, representing the, the university, but uh, this is my thinking. I am doing, uh, I did my PhD in, in Italy. I lived in Italy for 20 years and I am Italian citizen as well, but also I'm African citizen. But this is what I am witnessing. I'm, I'm bringing my, 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 my personal experience and now I'm working on global e-business and I see that everything is becoming digitalized. Nobody is uh, in in where I'm staying in is going to the market to 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 buy or uh, to order a service. Everything is done uh, digitally. So this is a fit. So we have to prepare, and I will be very happy to hear from uh, Sandro the the digital readiness of each country. This will help me also to develop my work on this digital transformation uh, project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have uh, uh, signals from the back of the room that the time for this session is over and we should leave the room to the next uh, uh, panel. So I would like to thank all the speakers uh, from, uh, from abroad. Some of them had to wake up very early to attend this event. So thank you very much and thank you to all the participants for any questions we keep chatting uh, outside here. Thank you so much. Bye.